Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I remember this person I knew back in high school. We were really good friends and we knew where each other lived. A few years after high school, she moved away to go to grad school. And from what I've heard, after she moved away, she seems to have changed into a completely different person compared to how she was when I knew her. And she doesn't even talk to me anymore. And because of that, I kind of feel like I was dumped completely when I found this out. Dumped is the episode where Gary starts spending time with Patrick and Spongebob thinks Gary doesn't want to be his pet anymore. This episode aired on May 11, 2001 according to this website and is also known as the first time where Spongebob calls Gary, Gary the Snail. This episode is also one of the few times where there's a true strain on Spongebob and Gary's relationship. This doesn't happen a lot, but there are some instances throughout the series where their normally happy guy and his pet dynamic does turn dark and or depressing. And this is the first episode where it's the main focus. This episode also introduces a word named Rex and two other snails named Larry and Jerry. Yeah, that's all I got. Come to think of it, this is one of those pre-movie Spongebob episodes you don't really hear people talking about too much. Especially since a lot of people consider season 2 to be the best season, this seems like the episode that people talk about the least. There has to be a reason for that, so that means it's time to watch this episode and see if we can figure out why people barely talk about this one. So the episode starts up and the title card music is actually sad for once. Well, that ain't a great start. Spongebob and Gary are playing tag. Spongebob tags Gary and then Gary tags him back. Patrick comes up and Spongebob invites him to play tag with them. Patrick agrees and Spongebob tags him. Patrick tags Gary and Gary starts to crawl all around Patrick's body, which shows that Gary has taken a liking to Patrick. Spongebob and Patrick laugh all day and into the night. Spongebob tries to get Gary to come home with him, but Gary goes missing. Patrick is back home brushing his teeth and his armpit. Well, remind me to never borrow Patrick's toothbrush. Gary had come back to Patrick, and Patrick offered to let Gary sleep over with him tonight, and Spongebob agreed to that. Spongebob was happy for them, and then he went home for the night. The next day, Spongebob saw Patrick and Gary, and Patrick showed Spongebob that Gary's been following him wherever he goes. Spongebob told Gary to chase him, but Gary didn't, and Spongebob seemed upset. Spongebob tried several ways to get Gary's attention, but Spongebob wasn't sure why Gary kept ignoring him. He tried Gary's favorite ball, snail nip, and closing the window on his head. But Gary didn't budge, and Spongebob got mad and just came over to get Gary and take him home himself. Patrick told Spongebob to let Gary choose who he wants to go with. Spongebob agreed, but Spongebob mentioned all sorts of nice things he did for Gary, so Gary would choose him. But despite all of that and Spongebob's begging, Gary chose Patrick. The two of them went home, leaving Spongebob heartbroken. Later that night, Spongebob decided to get a new pet, one that he would be confident that would never leave him for Patrick. The next day, Spongebob came home with a new pet worm named Rex. Spongebob tried to get Rex to do all sorts of tricks in front of Patrick and Gary, but Rex kept panting the whole time. I know dogs are always panting like that, but Rex sounds like he's gasping for air as if he's about to pass out. Spongebob calls out to Gary that Rex was so loyal, but he ran away and caught a bus. Later on, Spongebob came home with a new snail, which had thick eyebrows, a darker colored shell, and Spongebob named him Larry. That evening, Spongebob gave Larry dinner, but Larry didn't want it. Spongebob showed Larry his newspaper bed, but Larry ripped it up and slept in Spongebob's bed, and Spongebob slept on the floor. Just sleep on the couch, Spongebob. The next day, Spongebob tried to tell Larry a joke, but Larry hated it and presumably left, never to be seen again. Spongebob saw how different Larry was compared to Gary, and both of them were even more different than Jerry. That's true. Spongebob couldn't fit Gary or Larry in his pants pocket like he could with Jerry. Spongebob started to cry about Gary again. Then Patrick and Gary came over to do laundry, which got Spongebob even more sad. Spongebob broke down and started begging Gary to come home. Spongebob said that if Gary came home, no more rules would apply, and Gary could do whatever he wanted to, whenever he wanted to do it. Patrick told Spongebob to just let it go and stop living in the past. What's wrong with the past? Things were so much better in the past compared to how they are now. Patrick put his pants in the washing machine, and Gary went inside. And Spongebob and Patrick found out that Gary only wanted the cookie in Patrick's pants pocket. Gary came out and went to Spongebob. 
SpongeBob was so happy Gary came back to him and they went for a walk to reunite. Patrick was upset Gary only came after him because of the cookie and the episode ends. So that was dumped and I think that's a fine enough episode. There are some nice things to be found in this one. The tag scene at the beginning is a nice little happy moment between SpongeBob and Gary. It's also cute seeing Patrick and Gary bond in this episode when they have their sleepover together. It's kind of fun seeing Spongebob make a small mess out of his house to get Gary to come home. The ending when Spongebob and Gary reunite is very sweet. And the funniest part of the episode, in my opinion, is when Spongebob closes the window on his head, followed by when it opens, and then he falls down. Something else I like is how this episode explores the theme of how pet owners sometimes wonder what their pet can be thinking of. Spongebob had no idea why Gary kept ignoring him for Patrick, even after he reminded Gary of how he always took care of him. And when he took the cookie, he waited so long to do so. It's subtle, but it's still there. The other pet Spongebob tried to get shows that it's not always easy owning a pet, and that doing things out of spite isn't usually a good idea, since Spongebob mostly decided to get a pet out of spite to prove that he could still have a pet that won't leave him. Also, I don't remember the first time I saw this episode, but ever since I did, I learned to never trust a snail with eyebrows because they have never proved themselves to be trustworthy in your hardest times. But other than that, there isn't too much that's funny or memorable. This episode is very slow paced. I've seen people say that Patrick is rather unlikable in this episode. And to an extent, I can kind of agree with that. When Gary chooses Spongebob over him, Patrick is very puffed up and doesn't seem to feel any sympathy for Spongebob. However, I wouldn't say Patrick was being an absolute asshole when he tells Spongebob that Gary wanted to be with him. It was Gary making those decisions after all. And like I said, every pet owner has seen their pet make weird choices every once in a while. While it was cute seeing Patrick be nice to Gary, it came with the cost of Patrick being very smug towards his best friend Spongebob. And then near the ending, Patrick says Spongebob had a chance and he failed. But what was this chance? How did Spongebob fail at this chance he clearly didn't even know he had? Gary was Spongebob's pet for years. How would Spongebob know that he had a chance with Gary? Gary would have left Spongebob a long time ago if he didn't enjoy being with Spongebob. As usual, I'd argue it could be worse. Patrick could do things like laugh right in Spongebob's face when Gary chooses him, or show up to Spongebob's house with Gary more often during the day rather than just one time to do laundry. And Patrick does get his comeuppance at the end, even if it was very short-lived. You could also argue that Gary is kinda cheating on Spongebob, and you wouldn't be wrong, but this isn't a romantic relationship, but you can't deny you feel bad for Spongebob when he's alone without Gary. Going back to the doing laundry part, when Spongebob said, we used to do laundry, he was likely referring to him and Gary, but it's also possible Spongebob was referring to him and Patrick. Knowing what Patrick's house is like, he may not even have a washing machine, or at the very least, a washing machine made out of sand, which probably wouldn't work. That's not really a nitpick, just a little subtle thing to think about. Also, re-watching this reminded me of a dream I had a long time ago, where I was watching this episode, but the scene with Rex didn't exist, and the only other pet Spongebob tried to get was Larry. But going back to the earlier question, why don't people talk about this episode? Well, to answer that, there isn't really a lot to write home about with this one. I wouldn't call it bad by any means, but since there's a really good episode right before this and right after this, it can be easy to forget about this episode. This is clearly a more character-driven episode, and I do love me some character-driven stories, but there's just nothing to this one, I'm sorry. I'd be lying if I didn't laugh at all when watching this episode, but it only happened a couple times throughout the entire 11 minutes. It does have a fairly nice story, and there's nothing offensive going on in this episode, but it's just kinda there. I would describe Dumped as the, oh yeah, this exists, episode from season 2. There's nothing that stands out a lot from this episode, or any new characters that would appear later in the series in a meaningful way. But on the bright side, it's also not memorably bad compared to something like episode 528, Plain to See from season 13, which is just absolutely aggravating throughout the whole thing. I think the story works pretty well and flows okay, but it is definitely a little slow. There may not be anything noteworthy, but not every episode needs to have that. 
but that can make this episode forgettable in a season like this, which has so many banger episodes throughout. But it could definitely be worse. Dumped is an okay episode, there are a few funny moments here, it's a fine enough character driven story, and it taps into some themes that are pretty relatable to pet owners. But aside from that, there's just not much here that would probably keep viewers coming back to this episode multiple times. I don't think it's bad by any means, but that's fine. I know I've repeated myself a lot in today's discussion, but sometimes that's just how it is folks. I will say though, I may not have a pet, but at least I've never gone through anything like what happened in this episode. Cause watching an old childhood friend change completely is even worse.